everyone! In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I crochet this super cute baby sweater. This baby sweater is size 1 to 3 months. Dimensions of my sweater and also the pattern information will be in the description box below. Now let's get started. For this pattern, I have chosen a green and off-white colored yarn. This is a fingering weight yarn in merino, cashmere, and nylon. I'm using 100 grams in the green, which is my main color, and 50 grams in the off-white as an accent. I am also using a D 3.125 millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, six 16 millimeter buttons, a few stitch markers just in case, and a yarn needle to weave in ends. I have chosen to do this baby sweater in size one to three months. I am going to start with the body of the sweater. The body of the sweater is this portion right here. Create a slip knot of your choice. Insert your hook and chain 140. Remember this loop on your hook never counts as a chain. Once we get to 140 chain, I will meet back up and we can continue. Here is my chain of 140. We are now going to be crocheting back and forth on this chain. So we have the front of the sweater like this and it's of course going to open up for the buttons. So it's going to wrap around the baby like this. We will now start row one. We will not be counting our chains at the beginning of the rows as stitches. Single crochet into the second chain from hook. So one, two for me. To single crochet, insert your hook, grab your yarn and pull up a loop. We have two loops on our hook yarn over and pull through both loops. Now single crochet into the next three chains. So now we have four single crochet. Now we are going to begin a repeat. Skip one chain and single crochet into the next eight and then we're going to repeat that all the way down. Skip a chain and single crochet into the next eight chain. Once we get to the end, I will meet back up and show you how my work is looking. Here is my first row of single crochet all finished. At the end of that first row, you should have 124 single crochet. Now we are going to start row one. This pattern is going to have two repeating rows, this row and the next row. Chain three to begin row one. This chain three does not count as our first double crochet. We're then going to double crochet into our very first stitch. To double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, grab your yarn and pull up a loop. We have three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through the first two loops yarn over and pull through the second two loops. We're then going to just simply place a double crochet into each of our 124 stitches all the way back. Once we get to the end of this row, I'll meet back up with you and we can begin row two. Here is my work at the end of row one. To begin row two, we're going to chain one. This does not count as a stitch. Turn your work. And then we're going to be single crocheting into each stitch all the way across. So of course, again, we have 124 stitches. When we are working on the single crochet row, this is going to count as the right side of the work. To remember that, I'm going to go ahead and grab a stitch marker and that's going to hang out on the right side. The opposite side will be the wrong side and that's when we're doing our double crochet. Work the 124 stitches on row one and row two until your piece measures six and three quarters inches. Once my work is that tall, I will meet back up and we can continue on with the pattern. To begin the sleeves, create a slip knot and chain 42. Once you have your chain of 42, 
single crochet into the second chain from hook. And then into each of the next five chain. So now we have six single crochet. Now we will begin a repeat. Skip one chain and single crochet into the next six chain. And again, we're just going to skip a chain and single crochet into the next six. Once this base row is complete, I will meet back up with you and we can continue. At the end, you will have 36 single crochet. Here is my base row of 36 single crochet for my first sleeve. And now the pattern says continue with pattern. That means that we're going to be continuing with one double crochet row and one single crochet row, just like we did with the body of the sweater. So row one, of course, was double crochet. So we chain three, turn, and that chain three does not count as our first double crochet. We're then going to just double crochet one into each of our next stitches. And at the end of this row, we should have 36 double crochet. I'll meet back up for row two. Here I am finished with row one. Now chain one, this does not count as a stitch, and turn your work. Single crochet into each of your 36 stitches. Now we are going to repeat row one and row two, double crochet row and single crochet row, until our piece measures one and a half inches. Once we get to the one and a half inches, I'll meet back up and we can continue with the sleeve. So here my sleeve measures about one and a half inches and I'm ready to begin the repeat of row one again. So we're going to chain three, double crochet into your first stitch, and then we're going to be increasing two stitches in this row. So we're going to increase here and increase at the end of the row. And to increase, we're just going to double crochet two into the same stitch. So this second stitch right here, I'm just going to place two double crochet. And then one into each of the following stitches until I get to this second stitch from the end. Then I'll meet back up and we can increase again. Here I have two stitches remaining and I'm just going to place an increase, so two double crochet into the same stitch and then double crochet into my last stitch. So now I have 38 stitches. Now the pattern says we have to increase, just like we just did, two stitches every two rows five more times, so a total of six times. So I'm going to, of course, grab a pen and just mark down that I have increased once. We want to work up to 48 stitches. When this sleeve measures five inches, about five inches, we will put it aside and then we can make one exactly like it for the other side. After the increase row, the next row for me is going to be a single crochet row. So just one single crochet into each of my current 38 stitches. I'm going to meet back up with you one more time just to clarify how the increases are going to go. Here I am getting ready to begin my second increase and I just wanted to meet back up with you. So I'm going to put my hook down for a second. And let's see here. This was the increase row that we just did. Then I did single crochet row, double crochet row, 
and now we can increase again. So this increase will be on a single crochet row. I've chained one and turned and then just single crochet in your first stitch, two single crochet in the next stitch, and then one single crochet into each of your following stitches all the way until the second stitch from the end. Then you're going to increase two single crochet into the same stitch and then just end with a single crochet. At the end of this increase row, you will have 40 stitches. Again, continue increasing in this fashion every third row until you have a total of six increase rows and you want your work to measure five inches. After you have done all of the increases for your sleeve, you want to do one more repeat of row one, which is a double crochet row. So just one double crochet into each of your 48 stitches. So my sleeve turned out a little bit longer than the pattern wants, but I'm not too worried about it it came out about five and a half inches. Make a second sleeve just like the first and then we can move on with the pattern. Here are my two sleeve pieces all finished and you want to make sure and end with a double crochet row. Now that we have the body and the two sleeves complete, we can start the yoke of the sweater. As we create the yoke, we will also be joining the three pieces that we have here. Start off by placing all three pieces like I have here once you lay your pieces out, you want the right side of the body facing you and the wrong side of the sleeves facing you. So both sleeves will be wrong side, the body will be the right side. And as a quick note, the right side of this pattern is going to be the wrong side of the double crochet. So as you see here, this is the wrong side of the double crochet, so when we were working on it, we were working on this side, crocheting across, and you can tell because it's very smooth on this side. This is the right side of the double crochet. And this is the wrong side of the double crochet. You see it has an extra knot. Well, this is going to be the right side of the pattern. We are now going to join our yarn to the body of the sweater and single crochet 26. So I've got that little marker right there for myself, but we are going to single crochet across 26 stitches. You can join your yarn however you feel most comfortable. I have created a slip knot here and I'm just hooking into it and going to create a chain one and then single crochet for my first single crochet. So I'm single crocheting 26 across for this particular size. Once I get to my 26th stitch, I will meet back up and show you how the work is looking. Here I have single crocheted 26 stitches on the body part of the sweater. Now grab one of your sleeves and you want to place two stitch markers on your sleeve. They're going to be on the fifth stitch in to each side. So then you have 38 stitches in between. Next, skip these first five stitches and go from this piece of the work. So you're going to be joining now. We're going to jump over and single crochet the 38 stitches on the sleeve. So here I am skipping those first five stitches on the sleeve and then I am single crocheting into those 38 stitches. I'm just holding my work together like this but they are separate. So now I'm just going to continue on once I get the 38 single crochet finished, we can meet back up again. All right, so here I have done the 38 of the sleeve stitches, and now I placed another stitch marker. We're going to skip 10 stitches of the body, and then we are going to bring this back, and we are going to single crochet along here. So again, we are going to skip these last five stitches here, skip these 10 stitches here, and then we are going to single crochet 52 stitches along the body. So here I am just pinching the two pieces of work together again. We're not going to work them together, but it's just to hold them 
so I can get my stitches straight. So here I am just working my single crochet into just the body. And I'm going to work 52 stitches. As you see here, these five stitches are still free. All right, so here I have finished my 52 single crochet on the body of the work. And now we're ready to attach this second sleeve. You want to make sure the second sleeve has the wrong side facing up. So that would be the right side of the double crochet that we had talked about earlier. The right side of the pattern is going to be the wrong side of the double crochet. So there is the right side facing up. Then I have placed two stitch markers, each at five stitches in. So five stitches and five stitches. And now what we're going to do is we're going to join the body to the sleeve. Single crochet 38 stitches on the sleeve and then we're going to skip 10 stitches on the body which I have marked here and then single crochet 26. So let's begin with the sleeve. So I'm going to insert into just the sleeve here and place my first single crochet and then place 38 single crochet along the sleeve. Once this is all finished, I will meet back up for the skipping of the 10 stitches here back on the body again. Now that my 38 stitches on the sleeve is all set, I'm just going to take my work and go back with it. And now skip 10 stitches on the body. So starting here, count across, 10 stitches, and then single crochet 26 down here. You want to make sure and skip these last five stitches on the sleeve here. Once these 26 stitches are finished, we can meet back up and I can show you how the work is looking. This is how my work looks after the sleeves have been joined. Now I am going to turn the work and fix the sleeves and you can see. Now we are going to work the 180 stitches that are the top of the sweater. But before we do that, we want to grab 12 stitch markers. You are going to place the first stitch marker 13 stitches in, and then every stitch marker after that will be 14 stitches apart. You should be left with 13 stitches remaining. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so here I have placed all 12 stitch markers. The first one is at stitch 13, so we have 13 stitches, then 14 stitches, and each stitch marker is in the 14th stitch all the way across, ending here, and then I have 13 stitches remaining right here. So go ahead and place your stitch markers and then we can move on to the next step. From here we're going to be working the same pattern that we have been working. We're going to do one row of single crochet, that's what we just did, and then the following row will be a double crochet row. Now this double crochet row is going to be a little bit different. We are going to be decreasing in this row. So we're going to be placing a decrease to double crochet together right before each one of these stitch markers. So let's get started and I can show you how this is going to work. So of course chain three, this does not count as a double crochet. And then just double crochet into each stitch until you have two stitches before this stitch marker. All right, so here I have two stitches remaining before this stitch marker. And I'm going to double crochet them together to decrease by one stitch. To double crochet two together, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the first stitch, grab our yarn and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through first two loops. Yarn over, insert your hook into the second stitch, grab your yarn and pull up a loop. We now have four loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through the first two loops. 
Now we have three loops on our hook. Complete the stitch by yarning over and pulling through all three loops. So there now, if you look at the top, we just have one stitch and there they are together. So we're just going to continue in that fashion all the way across. Once you get to a stitch marker right before it, those two stitches are going to be double crochet two together to decrease by one. Once you get to the end, we can meet back up for the next step. As you go, you want to replace your stitch markers. So double crochet into the stitch that they're in and then replace your stitch marker. Here I am at the end of the row and I have decreased before each stitch marker. Definitely lots of counting in that row. Now the pattern says to decrease every four rows one more time and two times in total. So from here we are going to turn and do a single crochet row just one single crochet in each stitch, then do a double crochet row, single crochet row, double crochet row, and then on the fifth row I will meet back up with you and we can do the decrease again. You want to go ahead and work with the stitch markers in just where they are, otherwise you're going to have to replace all of them over again. Here I have completed my fourth row and turned the work. We ended with a double crochet row. I am ready to begin another decrease row. So four rows back was our last decrease row and we were decreasing before each stitch marker. For this decrease row, we're going to be decreasing after each stitch marker. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to single crochet all the way up and replace the stitch marker. Here I have single crocheted all the way up to the stitch marker and also replace the stitch marker. And now we're going to single crochet two together for a decrease. To single crochet two together, you're going to insert your hook into the first stitch, grab your yarn and pull up a loop, then insert your hook into the second stitch, grab your yarn and pull up a loop. We have three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. And now we have two stitches are now one. Now just place one single crochet into each stitch until you get to af those two stitches after your stitch markers. Remember to be replacing your stitch markers because we're going to be kneading them as we go. Now the next 10 rows are going to be a repeating pattern. I'm going to talk a little bit about it and get you started and then finish off camera and we can meet back up for the last few rows. Now the last row we just completed was a single crochet row and we did decreasing after the stitch markers. We are now going to be alternating. One row is going to be double crochet and that's just one double crochet into each stitch all the way down. And then the next row is going to be a single crochet row and we're going to be decreasing on those rows. Now the other thing that's going to be alternating, the next row of decrease, we are going to decrease before the stitch markers. And then the next row after that, we will be decreasing after the stitch markers. Now I have put together a little cheat sheet for myself and I will be posting it on the screen. You can pause the video and copy it down for yourself. Use a pen and check off after each row that you've completed. Once these next 10 rows are complete, I will meet back up and we can finish this cute sweater. So here's my work after completing those five decreases and I ended on a single crochet row. From here, the next two rows are both going to be decrease rows. I'm going to maintain this same pattern that we've been doing. So my next row is going to be double crochet and I'm going to decrease after each stitch marker. And then the next row, I'm going to do single crochet and decrease before each stitch marker. The next thing we have to do is evenly decrease 16 more stitches. So we need to go from 72 to 56. To do this, I have placed eight stitch markers evenly spaced. And what I'm going to do is decrease before and after each stitch marker. This way I will decrease as evenly as I can. So here again, I have folded my work in half like this and just so I could get my stitch markers even, I placed one on the front and one on the back to try to get them as even as possible. 
at the end of this row, I should have 56 stitches. After that's all finished, go ahead and fasten off and then we can move on to the edging of our sweater. Here is the baby sweater so far. We are now ready to do the edging and the buttonholes. To begin, we are going to start with the sleeves and here my baby sweater is right side facing and we are going to sew up this seam right here of the sleeve with a yarn needle. And then we're going to take an off-white color yarn and we're going to place six single crochet rows around the edge of each sleeve. Starting at the end of the sleeve with the right side facing, I have grabbed my yarn needle and a little bit of yarn. I have tied the end of the yarn to the sleeve and I'm just going to place a simple stitch all the way up the sleeve here. And then I'm going to end that stitch right there here. And then I'm going to go around this way and around the other way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This is going to be in fast forward, just so you can see how this looks. After your first sleeve is done, go ahead and go across to the other side and go ahead and do the other side as well. Now before I start the sleeve edge, I have turned the sleeve inside out here. As the pattern says to work this edge from the wrong side. To be able to match the button edge and the neck edge, I will be turning after each row. We're going to be placing six single crochet rows around the edge here. So to begin, I'm just going to insert my hook, grab my yarn. It doesn't have a knot in it. It's just a loop here. And I'm going to chain one and then place my first single crochet working over that tail. And then all the way around the edge here, I'm just going to place one single crochet into each one of these stitches. Once I get to the end here, I will slip stitch, chain one, and turn. Then I will finish all six rows, and once I've done that, I will meet back up to show how it looks. Once you get the first sleeve done, go ahead and complete the second sleeve just how you did the first. On the right side of the sweater, and with right side facing, we're now going to take the off-white yarn, and we're going to single crochet three rows back and forth, along this edge here. Here I have finished my first row of the three single crochet rows. And as you see here, it's just pretty basic. You just place each single crochet into a space just so it looks good all the way across. There's no rules to that. And now for row two, we're going to get ready for some buttonholes. Three single crochet from the top here and then I place a stitch marker, that's where I want my first buttonhole to go. And then I have placed these about two inches apart all the way down. I want five buttonholes total, so I've chosen five stitch markers. Now these buttonholes are pretty basic. You're going to chain one to turn and then single crochet in either one or two of your first stitches there. And then to make the buttonhole, you're just going to chain two skip two single crochet and a single crochet into the following stitch. 
and that made our first buttonhole there. You want to just place a single crochet in each single crochet all the way down and then once you come across your stitch marker or space that you want your buttonhole to be, just go ahead and place another buttonhole. Chain two, skip two stitches, and single crochet. Once this row is complete, I'll meet back up with you. So now my buttonhole row is all finished and you can barely see them because they're lying flat, but there they are. Now for the third row, you're just going to single crochet all the way back across here. And once you come to those chain spaces, you're just going to of course place two single crochet uh, over those spaces. So one into each one of the chains. And then we can move on to the next edge. Once that third row is finished of your buttonhole band, go ahead and fasten off. The next thing we wanna do is create a same white band across the other side of the sweater. But this side is going to have six rows and we're just going to use that off white again. And of course, you're just going to go back and forth all six rows, no buttonholes. This is where the buttons are going to be sewed onto. So once I have all six rows on this other side here, I will show you how it looks and then we can move on to the next step. Here I have completed the six rows on the opposite edge. The next thing we wanna do is place three single crochet rows around the neck edge of the sweater. Now that the collar edge is complete, we can start the faux pocket edges. To begin, create a chain of 13. Single crochet into the second chain from hook and into each chain all the way back. At the end of this row, you will have 12 single crochet. At the end of row one, chain one and turn, and then you're just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way back across. You want to repeat this row until you have four rows total. And then what you're going to do is fasten off and create a second piece just like this piece. Once we have both of those, we can place them onto our sweater. Once you have finished making your faux pockets, you want to then place them onto your sweater. I have just pinned them on so far here and I'll show you how I measured. So from the bottom edge to where the pocket edge is meeting here, I have two and a half inches up and then measuring just the green, I'm not measuring this white at all, I am measuring an inch and a half over to the pocket and then I did the same on both sides. I am now going to neatly stitch on these two faux pockets and add my five buttons, sew in all of my ends, and then we can look at how the sweater is looking. After sewing in my ends and adding the buttons, here is the little sweater. I have not yet blocked this sweater. I hope you have fun making this super cute little sweater. Thank you for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. Have a lovely crochet day, and I hope to see you again in my next tutorial.